So uh, this talk is not only about the Angular CLI, but it's uh, about the whole ecosystem. So uh, I hope you, you guys can take uh, many things out of it, not just what the CLI can do for you and how to use the CLI, but also how to take advantage of other pieces in the Angular ecosystem. And this talk is called Beyond Engineer because Engineer is the first step and then what you do next. Uh, that's what I'm here to tell you, <laughs> basically. Uh, just one second. Can you see? Yeah, it's still good. Uh, the slides for this talk, actually the previous talk that I uh, did in uh, the Angular conference, uh, are online already. I will just update with this version after the talk so you can grab the slides if you want. I'm gonna tweet them later as well. And I am Ciro Nunes. Uh, you can find me on Twitter by Ciro Nunes Dev. I'm a Google developer expert in web technologies and Angular. And I work for this pretty cool company called Ansarada in Sydney. I work in the design ops team there, and uh, a funny fact, I think, uh, I work with React every day, so I'm not doing Angular as much anymore. But I'm building a CLI for React at Ansarada, so uh, as you can guess, I love CLIs. And especially the Angular CLI. I have this uh, story with the Angular CLI. I'm one of the first contributors back in 2015, and I still love it. And uh, these days, I don't even know what the guys are up to. If I read the code base, I would probably not even understand most of the stuff because I'm away for a long time. But I still love it, and I follow it uh, closely, even though I'm not working with Angular uh, as much anymore. And now uh, I'm going to ask for the help of the uh, demo gods, and I'm going to do a live demo here. So <clears throat> let's see. I have my terminal here, and what I'm going to do is jump into this tab. I'm going to go to talks. Can, can you see it uh, in the back of the room? Is it okay, the size? Yep. So talks, uh, yep. this is it. So I'm just gonna create a new, no, I'm gonna go demo one, demo one, and I'm gonna run ng-serve. So what I did here was just run ng-new, of course, the talk is beyond engineer, so I'm not running engineer again. The application was already created, and this is just, uh, if you jump here, this is just a simple, like a, a project from scratch, right? Nothing impressive, but now the impressive part, at least for me, is when you start uh, doing stuff like this. I wanna add Angular material to my project, and thanks to uh, the version 7 of the CLI, now we get this pretty cool prompts. So for example, when I want to add Angular material, I can actually pick up a team. And I think this one looks really good. Uh, pink, blue, gray. And don't look at my password. Cool. Uh, I want to add Hammer.js for gesture recognition, and I also want browser animations because animations are cool. Uh, so what this is doing is just uh, installing all the NPM packages that I need for Angular Material and updating some files, right? So if I run ng-serve now, what's going to happen is I'm just going to see this font changing because now I'm using Roboto, which is the, the uh, font for material design. So as you can see, now it shows the Roboto font and I have material design available. So what I can do with that is just uh, say ng generate uh, from the Angular material schematics uh, dashboard for me and call this dashboard dashboard. So I created the dashboard component based on the dashboard schematic from the Angular material 
schematics. If you're not understanding anything schematics and so on, of course, I'm going to go through this during the talk. This is just to get you excited a little bit. So created the dashboard. Now I want to create a nav component as well, right? Cool. Created the nav component. And I'm going to open my editor, Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to open the routing module. And I'm going to add a route here for the dashboard component that I created. Uh, component, dashboard component. Cool. So now if I do ng-serve. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Take some time to run, and then we can start seeing the dashboard here that I created. So I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup in my app component. Oops. App component. I want to see the HTML, yes. So this is it. Now, what I want to do is to just say app nav for the nav component that I created. And I'm going to open the app, the nav component and say, all right, uh, use ng content here. So I'm passing the route, the router outlet as a children or as a child of the app nav component. And I, uh, in Angular, this is called content projection. So I just did content projection here, and that's what it looks like. Uh, I already have a pretty good uh, base to start working on, on my project. If I'm not a designer, if uh, because I'm not, uh, and I don't have any skills to design stuff like this, I can just base my work on uh, what the CLI gives me out of the box. So, uh, of course, with uh, the help of Angular Material, that's what I mentioned, the whole Angular ecosystem. Uh, so I can do some more cool stuff here. Let's say uh, I don't want to have a if to show the button. I want to always show this button here. So I changed and it live reloaded. That's pretty good developer experience, I guess. Um, Let's do just one more thing before we get back to the slides. Uh, now I changed the condition to show the navigation. And what I've got is this pretty cool uh, navigation. And it's also like a responsive uh, web design kind of thing. Uh, I think this is pretty cool. What do you guys reckon? Yep. yep. <laughs> All right. So the agenda for today, I'm going to go through the basics of the CLI, how to actually use it, how to install it, and so on. This uh, can be a bit boring. So in the second part, we'll see how to actually unlock the automate productivity using the CLI. This means using or creating schematics. And we'll see what schematics are all about. And uh, last but not least, some tips and tricks uh, to work as an Angular developer in 2019. <laughs> so let's go through the basics first. Uh, how do you start new projects? Uh, can somebody from the audience say? How do you? Engineer. Yes, so I just do engineer the name of my project. And um, well, before uh, the CLI version 7, I actually had to memorize or to go through the help uh, of the engineer command to understand what options I have available. So for example, I can start a project with uh, routing, and I want to prefix all my components with GDG. But uh, in version 7 now, you have those prompts, right? So you don't need to memorize, you just call engineer, and it's going to prompt you, do you want to use routing? You want to use which kind of CSS uh, preprocessor uh, pre and stuff like that. And this is still very early stages. Uh, the guys from the CLI team are working really hard to put like more prompts and uh, more customizations for you. 
Uh, a pro tip uh, when you're running any kind of command with the CLI is to actually use the flag or the option dry run. And this means that the command will run without making any modifications to the file system. So you can use it to play around and to kind of understand what the command would do if you didn't run in dry run mode. That's the idea. So that's pretty handy when you're creating schematics and when you're actually trying to figure out uh, how to use a component uh, command of the CLI. Uh, the next thing that I already showed here uh, is how you can add capabilities. You can add libraries, but you can also add some other stuff to your project, right? So one example is to add a library like Angular Material. It's a third part, uh, third part library. I add it to my project like this because this follows uh, the uh, Angular package format. So it's all compatible with the CLI. And uh, in this case, with the Angular Material schematic, you get uh, out of the box stuff like this. You can then run Angular Material dashboard and create a dashboard component. If you wanna know about all the schematics available, you have to go to the documentation of the uh, Angular Material and there's gonna be schematics for Three component, navigation, uh, drag and drop, a lot of cool stuff with material design. And it's important to notice that uh, those uh, components that you scaffold, they're, they're, not, uh, meant, uh, they're not meant to be just like plugged in the application and work. They're like a, a good start for you and then you customize to your needs, right? <coughs> So I mentioned adding capabilities besides libraries. So you can actually add uh, progressive web app capabilities to your application. And just by running this command, you actually get uh, the maximum score for progressive web apps uh, with Angular. So that's actually pretty cool. Like You don't need to do anything else. You just run that command and you get uh, service workers installed, offline support for your application. You get uh, cool icons for when you add it to your home screen, all that stuff. Ah, and uh, one of the most important things, it adds also a no script tag to your HTML to say that the application is not uh, available without JavaScript. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people that don't uh, have JavaScript enabled in their, their phones or their browsers. So, uh, I was being sarcastic just to <laughs> make sure. Uh, so, another thing uh, that's pretty cool and I didn't show yet is how you can keep your dependencies up to date. Uh, who here in the room already had to migrate, let's say, from Angular 4 to Angular 5 or something like that, right? Like, migrating versions can be a pain and uh, now, all you have to do is just run uh, ng update, and this is gonna give you a pretty good start. Now uh, it's gonna uh, update the packages for you and stuff like that. And in this case, I'm uh, running the command with the D flag. What does the D flag do? Dry run, yes, exactly that. So, uh, see how I have many options for my commands. Like in this case, I'm using dash dash all dash dash next. This means upgrade all my packages or update all my packages to the latest version, even if it's a beta or an RC. And RC is release candidate, if you're wondering. So if I just remove next, it's gonna update all my packages to the latest stable version. So that's also pretty handy uh, if you want to experiment with uh, like latest versions and whatnot. You can also scaffold pretty much anything you want. Uh, we already went through some of that stuff, but I'm just gonna go through it again. So by anything, I mean anything. You can scaffold guard uh, for your component. You, uh, 
not for your component, for your application. And guards are pretty much like services in Angular, but they're meant for uh, to guard routes and stuff like that. App Shell, if you're working with progressive web apps, uh, components, directives, services, uh, pipes, and so on. You can, <laughs> Will, this is for you. You can also scaffold uh, Universal for your project, just like uh, he's shown in his talk. So not going through it again. Uh, very handy, this one. If you say, like, I created this component, a tooltip component, and uh, I want to reuse it in another application. Right? It can be a real pain to set up a new project and uh, on GitHub or whatnot and develop it, create a CI process to publish the package and so on so I can uh, reuse it in different projects. So the CLI already uh, have you covered with this command because it scaffolds uh, a project for you with a very nice structure uh, according to the Angular package format. And just by doing that and running the, the node scripts it uh, gives you out of the box, you can actually publish your library in, in no time and start using it in different projects. Later on, I'm going to show you the next level of that stuff. It can get better. Uh, another pro tip, just one second here. Another pro tip is to actually go ahead and create libraries for your components. Like every single time you notice that you created this uh, kind of uh, utility component, right? Like a tooltip, uh, drop down and stuff like that. Go ahead and create a library for it because it's a very good way to actually validate if your component is well designed, right? It, it's just like testing it in the battleground. You created the component, now I'm going to put it in different applications. And the way to do that is by making it a library. Uh, you can also do internationalization. And I think this, this is also like super handy. Let's say I didn't, uh, I created my application, I developed everything. My applications got uh, hundreds of uh, features. It's big and it's full of hard-coded strings. <laughs> Who does that? Pretty much everybody, I guess. Uh, now what you can do is just run this command, uh, extract i18n, and what this does for you is to actually get all your strings and move them to a translation file that's a standard for translation houses. So you can just deliver it to translation houses, for example, get it back, commit in, in your application, and you have it translated into multiple languages, if you will. You just got to spend some money with the translation house. So yeah, of course, you have to mark uh, those uh, pieces of text with this pipe, i18 and pipe. So the CLI can actually go there and extract and all. So there's still a manual step that hopefully will go away in the next versions. And let's say, all right, the CLI thing is pretty cool. I've got up and running, but now I need more control. I want to add, let's say, Jest uh, instead of Karma because it comes with Karma out of the box for testing or something uh, similar. Right? I just want to mess up with the Webpack configuration because the CLI uses Webpack uh, under the hood. So you can just run ng eject. And when you run ng eject, you pretty much get the Webpack configuration out of the CLI. And now you have uh, the responsibility to maintain it not the CLI anymore. So this is pretty good for you if you need to customize it or if you just want to learn more how the CLI works behind the scenes. But a word of caution is uh, once you eject, my friend, uh, you never can, you can't go back, right? Like if you eject from the CLI ecosystem, uh, you're by yourself then. Uh, there's no ng add anymore, ng update, ng nothing. It's ng you then. 
So, uh, next piece of advice, just uh, memorize the shortcuts uh, so you type less. Even though engineer is just three letters, uh, you can still like just type ngn. And this is true for most of the commands. You just have to type the first letter. So just try it out. So you don't have to keep on typing ng generate, ng blah, blah, blah. Just the first letter is enough, right? You can also ask for help. Uh, don't ask me, but ask the CLI. If you just run ng help or just ng, it gives you all the available commands you can run and a short description, that's handy. And now let's say, hmm, this uh, lint command seems to be pretty interesting. I need more information about it. Uh, I can just do ng lint in that case, or ng g universal, universal dash dash help. If I want help about a particular uh, part of the CLI. So in this case, if I run that command exactly, it's gonna give me help for the universal schematic. So it can go that specific into uh, the help information. <laughs> if I get rid of universal here and just do ng generate help, it's gonna show me help for the generate command itself and more information about it. So. You can also learn from the docs a lot. Like uh, as an Angular developer, I spend, uh, when I used to do Angular every day, I, uh, before like starting actually working on a feature or a bug fix and so on, I would actually just uh, jump into my terminal and uh, search the docs for something that I wanna learn. Like let's say mm, I, there's a long time that I don't read about content projection. I did that talk back in uh, Melbourne and uh, I looked like a fool because I didn't know how to use it. And now I can just go ahead and search about it. It's gonna open uh, the documentation for you in the right place and I can read more about it. It's just handy, right? Nothing uh, special. You can always Google stuff. But uh, it, it's good to know, right? You're in the terminal already, just type it and it's gonna uh, jump you to the right place in the documentation. Uh, well, for this first part of the talk, uh, the takeaway is pretty much like to play around with the CLI and have some fun, like use the dry run, try the commands, use ng help, uh, like feel like a hacker, right? Impress your friends, just uh, call your coworker, hey, have you seen this command? Because you're actually becoming a much better developer doing that. Right, now uh, the interesting bit, uh, how to unlock that uh, ultimate productivity. This part of the talk is all about uh, learn, create, and share, right? First, you learn how the CLI works. Then now you're gonna learn how schematics work. And schematics are pretty much what power the CLI behind the scenes. And after that, you'll be able to create your own schematics. So let's say I ran some schematics here to scaffold, let's say a dashboard, a navigation, and so on. But you can do it for your own stuff, let's say, uh, Australia Post have uh, components related to posting uh, stuff. So you can create those uh, schematics to easily create uh, Australia Post components across teams and uh, stuff like that. And this is all thanks to this pretty cool tool called Schematics. I talked about schematics, 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 so that's the time. What are schematics anyways? There, a, it is a simple way to apply transformations to your project. And you may ask what kind of transformations you're talking about. Uh, 
any kind of transformation pretty much. You can change the file system, right? So you can update files, you can create new files, you can rename uh, files, move them around, do whatever you need. And uh, this is important because it's all based on AST. So the transformations are actually smart. You're not doing like rejects to, re to change your code. You're actually checking the abstract syntax tree and making sure that your transformations are safe, safe to be applied. And that's exactly what the CLI does when you run ng generate component, it's running a schematic. When you run ng add Angular material, it runs a schematic. And the way that schematics are built are like this. Uh, you have two uh, parts. You have rules and you have trees. Rules are just functions that takes a tree and returns a tree. Quite boring, right? Uh, but the trees are interesting because they take, they are existing files and a stage area. This is gonna make sense <laughs> in a few slides more. Just bear with me. So, the way that you use uh, schematics, what they actually do is to modify the trees instead of the file system directly. And this is what allows us for dry runs and for reusability and extensibility of schematics, right? Because you, you're not applying that transformation directly to the file system because once you apply it, you can't come back, right? You have to transform it again. But if you transform a tree in a stage area, you're kind of safe. You can mess around. If you break your file system, if you delete your project, it's still in that stage area, so you didn't apply it anyways. So, how to actually go ahead and create your own schematic? First thing, you have to install it. So you just install globally the schematic CLI. And then you can generate a blank schematic. There are also other uh, templates you can use, but just for the sake of the example, we're taking the simpler one, the blank schematic. It comes with nothing, and then you have to build it yourself. The only thing that this is gonna give to you is the Node.js scripts that you need to publish the schematic to test it. So it comes with uh, unit testing configured out of the box. So if you, like, as you create your, your schematic, you can also unit test it quickly, run the tests and publish it. You don't need to uh, concern yourself with uh, configuring the build system like Webpack, Parser, or whatever you want to use. Uh, the, CLI, the schematic CLI gives it to you. And then, uh, the, let's now see, right? We installed uh, the schematic CLI. We generated a blank uh, schematic. So now we want to create a row, right? That's the first part. So there's this thing called uh, Angular Dev Kit. And the Angular Dev Kit is full of features. Uh, one of those are schematics. So you can kind of use those to, to create uh, those schematics. And let's say this is my first schematic. It's called my component, just a random name. And uh, as you can see, it's a function. Uh, that returns a rule, and a rule is just a function that return that takes a tree and returns a tree, right? What I explained before. Pretty boring, and uh, guess what this thing is doing? Nothing. It doesn't do anything. So let's do something now. I'm gonna use my tree to actually create a file on it and this file is gonna be called something that you may pass, like a name for the file, or hello, so that's gonna be the file name, and word is gonna be the contents of the file. So that's how you can create a file using schematics, right? You wanna, 
you may want to put something more interesting than a hello world uh, content in your file. And that's how you can actually reuse and extend schematics by chaining them together. There's the chain method and uh, external schematic allows you to actually execute an external schematic uh, easily. So let's say inside my schematic here, all I want to do is to first create a file called hello with the content word. And then I want to chain it together with an external schematic. So let's say maybe I want to add a progressive web app capability to my application all together with this schematic. Oh my God, I'm am I running out of time? <laughs> Ooh, cool. So l let's uh, make it a bit faster. Collections. Uh, so collections are pretty much, uh, collections is pretty much uh, JSON file that's going to have uh, all your schematics listed. And uh, here you just put the name of your schematic, a description for it, and the factory is actually the function that's going to be executed when you call that schematic. So that's how you do this mapping. And then when you publish it on NPM and so on, uh, the CLI will be able to pick it up thanks to this collection. It's just like a way to map uh, what you have with what you want to run. So you can just go ahead and build and test it by running build. And then you use the schematic CLI to execute it. Notice that dry run false. Uh, schematics are always dry run by default and you have to explicitly say that you want to actually apply the transformations. <coughs> and to debug your schematics when you're developing, it's just like any other Node.js project. You just use the, the inspect. Uh, and uh, the way to integrate this whole thing with the CLI is by, let's say, I created a new app and then I link my schematic, or when I publish it to NPM, I can just install the schematic. And then I can run it with ng generate the name of my schematic collection and the name of the schematic that I want to run. So just for the sake of the example, I put both with the same name. And when you're happy with it, just make sure to give it back to the community. Like, you created a cool schematic, publish it on NPM. Don't be selfish, please. <laughs> and uh, if you want to learn more about schematics, uh, there's this pretty cool book. It's free. Uh, and schematics can be quite complicated to get your head around and to actually build yourself. There's no, not a lot of documentation about it. That's why I recommend this book if you want to learn more. Right? Um, and now uh, the tips and tricks. I have three minutes or something. Let, let's try. So the cherry of the pie. Unfortunately, we just have a few minutes. Uh, there's this thing called NX. Uh, it's uh, an extension, extension for the CLI. And this uh, is awesome because it gives us a monorepo structure, enterprise ready. What does this mean? Uh, you can actually create multiple projects and multiple libraries inside the same uh, structure, sharing the same uh, packages, sharing the same configurations. So this gives you a lot of uh, productivity, I guess, and many other benefits. Uh, another thing is to make sure you, if you're using NGRX, to leverage the schematics from the, the NGRX organization. Uh, you don't need to do all that NGRX boilerplate kind of thing. Just run the schematics. If I, if I have a few more minutes, I'll show them. And uh, last but not least, you can actually ditch everything that I said before and just download and install the Angular console. <laughs> it, it's a graphical interface for the CLI, and it gives you all the commands and also the possibility to explore external schematics that are available. So I'm just going to show it really quick. 
And again, I was being sarcastic, sarcastic right? You, you don't have to ditch everything. You, there's still use for the CLI in, in the terminal, of course. So uh, this is the Angular console running right here. So as you can see, I have this workspace with a to-do application, with a to-do end-to-end application for my end-to-end -end tests, and a library called Highlight that just highlights a piece of text. Uh, the interesting bit here is if I run this task called uh, depth graph, I can't. I, I won't be able to run affected because I didn't change anything. So let me just see. All right. See, you still need the terminal. So let me just jump into the terminal. This is demo two. And then you run yarn. Can, can you see it? Yeah, yarn, depth graph. So if I run yarn depth graph, this is going to give me a graph structure of how my workspace is working. So for example, if the highlight library was used in multiple applications, the graph would look different. If it wasn't used anywhere, different as well. So you, you can kind of have this overview of what your workspace looks like. I think this is pretty cool. And you also have many other things that I'm not going to be able to show. But um, let's see. I'm just going to run this project here and show you quickly how I used the NGRX schematics uh, in this project to quickly get up and running with it. I didn't do much. I just want to show you what you can do when you're starting a new project or just when you uh, like in an existing project as well if you're not using NGRX you can also leverage those schematics and for those that doesn't know what NGRX is it's just like a redux uh, on steroids for Angular so if I open the redux tab here I can see that I have some uh, actions that were dispatched and they modified uh, the state. So they updated the list of to-dos when the to-dos were loaded. And the way that I did it, one minute, sorry. The way that I did it, I'm just gonna show you the command, was by generating ngrx to-dos just like this. this bit here, ng generate ngrx to do's module. And I'm saying that this is root. So this means that my uh, ngrx module is going to be attached to the app module, which is the root module of my application. And then I can just start going nuts, like creating actions, creating entities, creating everything. And I can avoid that big uh, NGRX boilerplate that nobody likes. So back to the slides. The takeaways for this talk, uh, practice the commands, use dry runs, uh, have fun with it. Use and create and share schematics. That's going to unlock that uh, productivity. Use the help command in the docs just because it's cool <laughs> and embrace the ecosystem like you saw how I was able to show you a quick demo it's nothing impressive but it's like a real good starting point for for a real application if you will and this is just because I've learned that there is Angular material there is NGRX there is NX so take the time and explore like the different things don't stick with Angular or React like go beyond engineer and uh, stay curious explore those opportunities uh, use your creativity and thank you very much